All right, we are back with another Pick'em video. Going to be talking Thursday Night Football on this one. Last time we talked football, we went 3-0, so I'm going to try to continue that momentum out. Um, I will say, like I always say for one-game slates, you know, these Monday nights, these Thursday nights, Sunday nights even, don't throw the house at it. This one game, you're trying to predict essentially what's happening this whole game. You know, bringing up a game script in your head. Is someone going to be playing from behind? Is someone going to be playing with the lead? And then you come making making plays based on that. You can make a few different scenarios in your head, but again, you're just trying to figure out exactly what's going to happen in one game rather than you know spreading value out across a full slate of games or multiple sports. So don't go too crazy. We're going to talk three plays, and again, trying to trying to go three and zero like we did for Monday Night Football. Except this one might be a little bit harder to predict. The Patriots offense, we have no idea what's going to happen. The wide receivers on that team just don't really do anything. Brissett's not throwing the ball. Stevenson, Ramondre Stevenson for the, the, the running back there, he's going to do as much as he can. 20 carries in both the first two games, um, and the Jets have a weaker, a weaker defense in terms of on the ground. I didn't love where I saw prize fix lines for Stevenson's rushing yards, but I do think he could have another big rushing game uh, like we've seen from him. And again, it just like the, the wide receivers are doing nothing on this team. In terms of any sort of receptions or receivers on the team, Hunter Henry, the tight end, is probably going to be the most likely guy to get the most targets. And on the Jets side of things, a little bit easier uh, for me to try to predict just because Aaron Rodgers' lines have been really low. He's gone, you know, much under this line the past two games. But the passing defense of the Patriots has been absolutely horrible. We just saw the Seahawks kill them last week. Smith, Najigba, and Metcalf went over 100 yards, I'm pretty sure. And they had 22 receptions between the two of them. Um, so, yeah, we're going to talk about a few different guys on the Jets side of things. Ultimately going to give you free four, uh, free four picks, four free picks, and, uh, and get you out of here. Game starting in about four hours, so you should have a decent amount of time to get in on the action. And there's also discounts going on on a lot of different apps um, for today's for tonight's game. So uh, we'll talk a little bit about that as well. So let's jump into the board, talk the plays. I'll talk about the apps that are having discounts and stuff and where you can try them out. And then uh, I'll be on my way. Okay, so jumping into the desktop screen here. First up, we're going to go to Aaron Rodgers. We're going to keep it simple. We want to do a little stack on the Jets side of things. I think they are going to be winning this game, controlling this game, but there's going to be a reason for them to be up, and I think it's going to be big receptions from you know a few guys on the Jets side of things. And I think it's going to start with Aaron Rodgers. He hasn't had that big game. They need some confidence if they really want to do something with this season. And I'm looking at this 216.5 pass plus, plus rushing yards. His rushing line's at 1.0. Um, his normal line is at 215. Oh, wait, his passing yards is the same as his... Okay, that's that's weird. That shouldn't be the same. But, yeah, we're obviously going to do this one. This is what I meant. 216.5 passing plus rushing yards. You can see this is great value in terms of uh, other books where they got it. Uh, prize picks at 216. That will probably get moved. But underdog, a lot of these other places already at 221. And uh, if you're going to do a combo line, you can't have the passing yards the same as the passing and receiving. I guess you can for Rodgers because you could get negative yards here. But um, I'm just going off the market value. I do like where the other books have this at 221.5. Uh, and the passing yards is not the same as that. So um, you could go to passing yards. They're very much the same. Rodgers isn't going to you know, rush for 100 yards or anything like that. Uh, but I do like this. This is a nice little starting zone. Now, next up, I want to go to Garrett Wilson. Um, I'm going to show the Patriots schedule from last week, or just essentially the game against the Seahawks, just to show you. I know I mentioned it, but just to show you how many yards they gave up to wide receivers. And Garrett Wilson is definitely the number one target on this team. We saw a little Alan Lazard uh, kind of uh, revival of his career last uh, last game. When, or no, I guess it was the first week of the game. Uh, yeah, against the 49ers when he had a few receptions in a row. But then he was quiet in week two. So I'm going to stick with Garrett Wilson here. You could go to his receiving yards for sure. I might go to his receptions at 5.5, again, just because of how many receptions they gave up. Um, so I'm going to go to Garrett Wilson, just six receptions. I think he's going to get there. Great combo, great correlated stack for Rodgers to be throwing. I know if he's going to get his yardage, Garrett Wilson, his number one target, should also be getting up in terms of his receptions lines. Now I can pull up Garrett Wilson's uh, outlier page, and we're going to do that in a second. So let me get the outlier page of Wilson up so I can show you his receptions lines, what he's been doing the past few games, and I'll also pull up you know, what the Seahawks did to the Patriots here. Okay, so this was the Patriots-Seahawks game on Sunday. Obviously, the Seahawks had to come back to win this game, and they also forced overtime, so that's you know a little caveat on this. But three guys with five-plus receptions, obviously Metcalf and Smith and the Jigba, 10 and 12 receptions for over 120 yards practically each. So that's insane. Garrett Wilson, definitely the number one target for Aaron Rodgers so far this year. You could maybe argue Al uh, Lazard there as well. Um, but I think Wilson's you know, do more, more tried and true here, especially at this point in his career. And uh, in terms of like passing yardage versus, or not passing, receiving yardage versus receptions, uh, he's gone under in both of the games so far as for his receiving yards. Um, and there's, you see the, the, the defense here 
for New England, 29th ranked, almost dead last uh, against you know receiving yards defense. So they're horrible at receiving yards. We, we that's pretty much you know driving home the point about that. Uh, but the receptions, they literally are dead last. And Wilson went over uh, in one of the two games, getting six and four receptions on 11 and six targets. So I'm favoring Garrett Wilson's receptions. You know, I can't I can't get over 22 receptions to Metcalf and Smith and Jaybo last year. Uh, not last year, just last week, a few days ago. And uh, yeah, we could see that again. Wilson maybe having a big game. Don't think he could go wrong with receiving yards or receptions, but that's kind of the reasoning why I'm at receptions here. Uh, so that's the first two. And then the next guy I want to talk about, I went to him one time. Uh, I forget what game it was. It might have been the first game of the season where Mike Williams barely even saw the floor. ESPN alert. Uh, but I'm going to Mike Williams again. 5.0 fantasy score. I'm, projection models are liking this. Uh, uh, market value is liking this. I just like this in terms of what I think is going to happen. And uh, we see how weak that defense is for the Patriots. Um, so getting people involved, Mike Williams just needs, this is two receptions for like 15 yards to get us at five. Uh, you know, if he gets a touchdown pass all of a sudden. Last week, he had his first reception of the year, a 19-yarder. So if you can get two of those, that's going to get over the fantasy score here. Going over to DG Fantasy, I will pull up the fact that Mike Williams, uh, a lot of other places, is a little bit higher than this. If I can spell his name right. A little bit higher than this at like 5.8. Like a lot of people at 6.0 now. Um, this, so this is just continuing to rise. So 53% hit rate there. Very good in terms of market value. And then I do have a projection model here. This is Rotowire's projection model. Any of the tools I'm using, if you're interested in them, definitely check out the links in the description. Use my link. You're going to get some sort of benefit for using my link. Um, and I appreciate that as well. So let's look at Mike Williams here. They're thinking he's at 7.65. So a lot of things pointing in the right direction here. I know he's had a very slow start to the season. But if I think Rodgers is going to be slinging, if I think these guys, you know, the receivers are going to be very active tonight, I think Mike Williams getting at least five fantasy points um, is, is, pretty, is pretty doable, especially considering the fact that it's not taking away too much from Garrett Wilson. So this little three-man stack, really, really solid. You're going to get a tiny little bit of a payout shift. Um, I think when we add our fourth play here, it's going to be a 9.5x rather than a 10x. Uh, but I really do like this, this little stack here. I know they'll probably be controlling the game, might not have to be throwing the ball uh, down the stretch of things. But the Patriots have been a little bit better uh, than they've uh, anticipated. So, you know, if they are you know, behind this game and Rodgers has to be throwing, that's, you know, even more power to us. But in terms of, in terms of this little stack, I think it's very doable for any sort of game. Uh, but against this wha uh, very, I was going to say whack, uh, yeah, whack passing defense from the Patriots, Patriots, um, I'm really liking, liking what I'm seeing for these three guys. And then before I move on from the Jets completely, I have to at least mention Brees Hall. The Patriots rushing defense has actually been really good, so that's why I'm favoring the receivers here and Aaron Rodgers. You can't go wrong with Brees Hall. He could definitely get a few receptions if you want to go that way too. Um, but yeah, he's been, he's been dominant. The Patriots have had pretty solid uh, rushing defense though. Um, to say the least. So that's why I'm kind of staying away a little bit from Brees Hall, unless there's a discount or something we can attack on a different uh, on a different app. But continuing out this four man, I want to get a nice nine nine uh, nine point five x for you guys. And the only guys that again I can trust is going to be Hunter Henry. You could look a few few things here uh, as receiving yards. I I don't mind that his his receptions at three point five. I wish it got bumped down to three just because the the books are favoring the under on this line. So I'm not personally touching that. His fantasy score at 8.0 is, is another one um, that kind of uh, is getting my attention here. But the guy I really want to attack is Ramondre Stevenson. Uh, I, I want to go to his rushing yards at 67.5 because the Jets' rushing defense has been their weak spot. We've seen a few guys go for crazy numbers. Remember Jordan Mason uh, when McCaffrey got ruled out in week one. Um, so I really want to go to his rushing yards. My projection model is not liking it as much. Uh, we can look real quick to see if it's a good market value play. Uh, if we look at Stevenson, again, this is DG Fantasy, just showing us market value where other books have their lines. Uh, you can see a lot of unders for Ramondre Stevenson. His receiving yards popping up on the over. His rush attempts, more of a 50-50 line. But a lot of unders, they're saying his lines have been boosted up just a little bit too much uh, to the point where we're not getting great market value. So with all that said, the one I landed on is his receptions, or sorry, his receiving targets at 3.5. It's got a pretty good hit rate, actually probably the best hit rate uh, for his lines that are up on prize picks right now. Um, again, my heart's kind of saying rushing yards, but I'll stick with the receiving tar targets at 3.5. I got his outlier page pulled up for that line. Seven of the last 10 games, he's gone over this. He's split this season. Uh, in 2024, he had three targets and then five targets. Uh, but he did have a game against the Jets last year where he had four targets there uh, as well. And if they're, you know, trying to come back from behind the game, you know, they don't trust a lot of guys in that, you know, right in that receiving core. Uh, so I would not be surprised at all if he drops down, goes for a little shovel pass to, to Stevenson 
uh, and it gets a few targets that way. So that's the one I'm going to land on. That's going to be the four, uh, four man for you guys for prize picks. Again, nice 9.5x. I don't know if you guys noticed this, that auto goes to flex play now. That's confused me a few different times. And I'm like, how is this only a 5x? Power play, that's how I play the, the, the uh, four mans. And uh, it's a nice correlated stack here. So Stevenson's going to be our one Patriot. If you want to go to another one, maybe put in, uh, Hunter Henry in there. Uh, I just can't trust anyone else. And then for our Jets, again, Aaron Rodgers, Garrett Wilson, Mike Williams. Nice little three-man stack there. Hopefully Rodgers is slinging the ball, especially early in this game. And uh, Mike Williams is kind of the one I'm, I'm a little skeptical on, but not really just because his snap percentage continues to rise 17% in the first week. I think like 63% in the second week, maybe even more than that. So that's continuing to rise. He's coming off an injury. They don't want to rush him back into things. But now it's week three. They got to get him going, and this is a good team to do it. So, uh, yeah, really liking the Jets side of things. Ramondre Stevenson is going to be the, the four man there. So that's that's the free pick. I want to talk a little bit about some platforms that have discounts going on. If you want to take advantage of those, I'm going to be making plays for those as well and posting those in the Discord before the game starts. And uh, if you want to get in the Discord, it's an awesome way to get in for free. You sign up using my codes to these uh, different platforms. You get advantage of the discounts. You get advantage of deposit matches of some sorts. And uh, again, you get into my Discord for free. So let's do that real quick and uh, then we'll get out of here. All right, so the first one we should start off here. This is over on Better. Better has insanely good lines. Like I'm talking the other day, I found a minus 160 line on Better where they're paying you out like a normal prize fix play or a normal underdog play. So you're getting like minus 110 value for a minus 160 play. And they very consistently have minus 140 plays. If you don't know what any of that means, it essentially means that you're getting access to a lot of very valuable plays over on Better. And uh, they keep it very simple over there. You can use code RICHPICKS to get a 100% deposit match up to your first $200. And today they have Garrett Wilson, one of our plays from the day, down to 4.5 reception. So definitely go ahead and hammer that. Um, I think it's like a $10 limit on each of these plays, but still pretty solid. Form a little, you know, five man or whatever. And uh, the payout system on better is actually even a little bit better than prize picks as well. So get on better. You get again, you get a free month of my Discord when you do sign up using my code RICHPICKS. All the stuff is not down below but also Garrett Wilson uh, kind of a discount there. If you want a free square though, Chalkboard running out a free square for all users, 0.5 passing yards, obviously he's going to get there. And he's another one of our picks. So Rogers getting one yard, everyone's, you know, he's obviously going to do that. Sign up for Chalkboard using code RICHPICKS. You're going to get access to my, again, Discord for a month. If you sign up for Chalkboard and better using my codes, you're going to get two months. If you sign up for all of these, you're going to get, you know, four, five, six, whatever months, however many codes you use. Um, but Chalkboard is another awesome app. They have alternate lines and things like that. Uh, and they run discounts every single day. Not joking. Every single day they run boosted plays and discounts. You can't really beat that. So Chalkboard, another really awesome one. And they have a free square going on. Sleeper, this is a, the only one that's code rich, not rich picks, just code rich, kind of even a cooler code. They got Brees Hall down to 51.5 rushing yards. This is part of Wild Card Wednesday, which they do every week. Obviously, you still have access to this until the game starts. Um, Brees Hall, not my favorite play of the day, down to 51.5 uh, rushing yards, but still a discount nonetheless. So if you want to take advantage of that, Sleeper, again, code, code rich, or if you're not you know, remembering all the codes, all the information is down below. And then last but not least, Underdog is not running a discount, but they're running a 30% profit boost. So I just ran that out. They also have a CD Lamb discount. They're doing something every single day of September. So it's a great time to try out, uh, try out Underdog. But they're a 30% profit boost. That's going to give you 30% more profit. And a normal 6X for a three-man, which is awesome because Price Picks and most other places do 5X for that. I do all my three mans on underdog and that's actually a 7.5 X for today when you use that 30% profit boost. So a lot of different platforms doing a bunch of different cool stuff, whether it's discounts, free squares, uh, profit boosts. Um, it's, it's not just prize picks. It's all these other places. That's what you want to be attacking. And that's where we get the value and, you know, turn into profitable sports betters over a period of time. So jump on those other ones, use my code. You can get into my discord for a month free using any of the codes and uh, definitely check those out. So that's going to do it again to remind everyone. These are our plays, our little four man stack, 9.5 X correlated. Uh, it's looking pretty good and uh, should be a fun game. It could be a sloppy game. We don't know uh, the Patriots inter interesting team. I'm actually a Patriots fan. Um, you know, not the best team as of right now, but we had our time. So, um, yeah, I'll be watching for sure. Hopefully you guys will be too. And hopefully, you know, we cash out again, three, and zero on Monday night football. Let's try to make it a seven Oh run for football. Remember, don't throw the house at it. You're trying to predict one game perfectly. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. And then again, this might be a little bit more of a sloppy one, uh, but we're doing our best. If you're new to this channel, definitely go ahead and subscribe. If you got it this far, leave the video a like, comment something down below so I guys, so I know you guys enjoyed it. This one's coming out really late, not going to get a ton of views, uh, but I did want to get something out um, for the guys that, that are waiting for it. So um, that will do it. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace out.